welcome to the 14th lecture on modern power electronics we have started with uh, resonant converters or soft switching techniques uh, in dc to dc converters in the last lecture i briefly introduced you to the concept of uh, resonant converters we basically discussed that with the help of um, a proper switching strategy coupled with a uh, you know an lc tank circuit we can somehow modify the switching characteristics of a device such that the device um, may turn on or turn off at zero voltage or at zero current and hence the losses in such devices will be minimized so if we talk about zero current switching first the current will become zero during turn off and only then the voltage will rise so this is about zero current switching where the current first becomes zero and then the voltage rises as a result during the transition v into i is zero v into i is zero so power loss across the device is uh, switching power loss is zero similarly you can also have zero voltage switching for instance that during turn on the voltage across the device first falls and then the current through the device rises so voltage first becomes zero and then the current switches so it is zero voltage switching again power loss is zero because the product of voltage and current in each interval is zero using a switch coupled with an lc tank circuit a resonant a resonating lc tank circuit we achieve these kind of characteristics and hence we uh, drastically reduce switching power losses almost make them equal to zero in um, power electronic converters so if you uh, want to see the practical application nowadays in the market you must um, be seeing uh, smart chargers are coming in the market which are very very small in size they are mostly resonant converters soft switching converters and they are extremely small as compared to your conventional chargers these uh, kind of converters operate at uh, switching frequency corresponding to megahertz not even kilohertz because and this is possible only because we can uh, theoretically uh, you know achieve zero switching power loss using the concept of resonance now today we will start with the first resonant buck converter and uh, the first type of resonant converter we will first start with zero current switching techniques so uh, a technique in which the current first becomes zero and then the voltage rises so of course we are talking about turn off right and uh, sometimes when we later on study zvs and then uh, sometimes zcs and zvs can together uh, you know they can coexist and you, you can uh, have minim minimization of turn on as well as turn off uh, losses so uh, we'll first begin with zero current switching and uh, we will start off with uh, the zcs resonant buck converter but before we move on to the resonant buck converter we need to understand a resonant switch uh, let me remind you from the previous lecture i had told you that the term uh, resonant converter will be used uh, actually for quasi resonance uh, converters where uh, a switch in combination with uh, an lc tank circuit will be used so a proper switching scheme plus the concept of lc resonance during some switching interval that is the concept of quasi resonance circuits so there is an lc tank that does not resonate always but it uh, you know goes into resonance resonance during a particular interval during switching and also the switching strategy is given uh, in such a way that uh, you know it aligns with the purpose of using l and c you will understand it better when we do the waveforms and uh, study the circuit but let's first see what a resonant switch looks like so there can be two types of resonant switch one is the l type resonant switch which has uh, a switch of course and an l and c in parallel this is the resonating tank which will go into resonance during some interval of switching and of course the pwm strategy of this switch will also uh, be given you know will be intelligently designed so that uh, it you know it takes care of the resonant uh, conditions in lnc so this is the l type of resonance switch 
probably because I, I don't know maybe because this looks like an L and then you also have an M type of resonant switch which is um, an inductor in series with a switch and a capacitor in shunt with this combination so this particular resonant switch is called an M type of resonant switch now whether you use an L type switch or an M type switch it depends on the circuit topology we will first start like I said with the ZCS resonant buck converter which uses an L type switch so let us begin you have a buck converter with an input DC voltage source you have a switch and along with the switch you have L and C components that are going to make the converter a resonant converter so this is your switch and then your usual thing repeats a freewheeling diode and an output filter just that a resonant buck converter is different from your classical buck converter in the sense that apart from the main switch you have an L and C combination an L type of resonance switch um, instead of just a single switch right so this is how your resonant buck converter looks like to simplify its analysis I assume uh, that this uh, circuit can be replaced by a current source at the output because I know that this current let's call it IL its average value will be equal to I naught of course and this current is going to be continuous right because there is an inductor there's a filter so I may simply replace this with a current source like this for easy analysis right so this is your ZCS resonant buck converter. Now this converter to understand its uh, mode of operation and how we are basically minimizing switching power losses we need to see uh, how this uh, device undergoes the turn on turn off process. There are four modes of operation. So you have mode 1, 2, 3 and 4 that you know overall describe the switching operation of this switch and only in some particular modes you will see that resonance will occur and it will eventually lead that uh, to a ZCS condition that the current will become zero through the device and then the voltage across the device will rise right that is what our goal is now to uh, study this further let's I think I'm running out of space, so I should make smaller circuits. And then a current source like this, I know. So this is my resonant buck converter circuit. And on uh, the right hand side, I will draw waveforms. So I assume at t is equal to 0, I have given a pulse to the device between its gate emitter terminals. So from time equal to 0 to some random time t1, 0 to t1 is my mode 1. That is the moment I give a pulse to the device. Let's see what happens. When I give a pulse to the device, assuming that previously the diode must have been conducting because we are assuming a steady state operation, uh, this switch will go into conduction, right? So during mode one, my equivalent circuit will look something like this. So this is the switch which is conducting the current through the switch is rising but the diode is also conducting because the current through the diode is falling such that this current and this current together make a constant I naught right so the switch current is rising the diode current is falling and this together makes up I naught which is constant right because the diode is still conducting in mode 1 as, as soon as you give a pulse to S, 
the switch S, because the diode is still conducting from previous conduction, it means that the capacitor is short circuited. So I may very well remove it because I've already shown a short circuit. So this is how my equivalent circuit looks like. If I want to analyze it mathematically, there is going to be some inductor current. And let's try to find out this inductor current. It is going to be equal to, I can simply write VDC is going to be equal to L DIL by DT because this VDC is getting applied across the inductor simply. Or in other words, I can integrate and simply write that IL is equal to VDC DT by L integral which means it is VDC into T upon L. This is my inductor current as a function of time which is also my switch current because the switch is in series with the inductor. So what happens, we will first draw waveforms of the inductor and capacitor, the resonant uh, circuit, right? So what happens is that the inductor current at T equal to zero begins to rise. So the inductor current begins to rise, right? And when it is rising, at some point, it will reach the value I naught, that is the value of the load current. At this point, the diode will give up conduction and the switch will go into complete conduction. The diode will turn off. This point will mark the end of mode 1. And this point is basically, you know, let's name it as T1. If we know the value of the inductor, and the you know the uh, load current to be carried by the buck converter we can actually find out t1 you just substitute i l is equal to i naught and uh, t1 uh, t is equal to t1 i can simply find that at t1 is equal to l i naught upon vdc mode 2 will begin or you can say that the inductor will reach the current, uh, inductor current will reach I naught. Or you can say that uh, the diode will give up conduction. Right? So now let's move back to mode 2. This was about mode 1. Also during uh, mode 1, uh, we will see the capacitor voltage. The capacitors were short circuited, right? So we see capacitor. It was short circuited. So the capacitor voltage in this interval was zero, right? The capacitor voltage was zero. Now let's move to mode two. What happens in mode two? Let's see the equivalent circuit. The switch is conducting and you have the uh, inductor. And because the diode is now off, it has become off because the inductor current or the switch current has reached I0. And obviously now it is going to take care of the entire I0. And because the diode has become open circuited, so now the capacitor will come into play. Right? So this is your equivalent circuit during mode 2. This is also the time uh, mode 2 begins from T1 to some random time, say T2. This is also the time when L and C are resonating. So only during T1 to T2, uh, the, you know, the LC tank will resonate. Now let's do the analysis, the mathematical analysis during this interval. I have an inductor current IL and I have a capacitor voltage VC. And obviously I have two differential equations. The first differential equation is on... Uh, I can simply write KVL. VDC is equal to L DIL by DT plus VC. And the second differential equation can come from KCL and that is IL minus I naught, if this is I naught, minus I naught is equal to C DVC by DT. 
which is the capacitor current going into the capacitor right so if this is i naught this is i l i can have a second differential equation again i'm running out of space so uh, i can uh, double differentiate my first equation 0 is equal to L D 2 I L upon D T 2 plus D V C by D T. After double differentiating it, I can substitute this equation into this equation and I will get L D 2 I L by D T 2 plus I L by C is equal to I naught by C. So the information contained in this uh, differential equation, it's a second order differential equation, which contains both, uh, you know, the KVL and KCL first order differential equations. The equation for capacitor voltage I have uh, retained over here because I may need it later on to uh, you know find vc from this i will find um, il uh, using laplace transforms on uh, the in the second order differential equation i get uh, i may just simply rearrange it a bit like this and then apply laplace transforms on it so uh, i have s square um, il of s minus s of I L zero, which is the initial condition of the inductor current, uh, minus I L dash zero, the initial condition of the differential of the in uh, of the inductor current. So this is the double differential, plus I L S upon L C is equal to I naught upon S, since I naught is a constant L C. So this is the Laplace form of the second order differential equation. Let me find the initial values. I have S square I L S minus S. The initial value of the inductor current, initial value means uh, at T1 because I'm starting this analysis in mode 2 which begins at T1. The initial value of I L is I naught. So I can write this as S I naught minus the differential of I naught. Now uh, during this interval, uh, during the first interval or mode 1, the inductor current was rising and its equation was I L is equal to VDC L by T. So its differential was VDC by L which was constant. Since it was rising at a constant rate, its differential was constant at VDC by L. Obviously even at this point, it's the value of its differential would be VDC by L. So I have um, VDC by L and then I have plus ILS upon LC is equal to I naught upon SLC. I can write this further as ILS into S square. So this is gone and uh, plus 1 upon LC is equal to VDC by L plus SI naught plus I naught upon SLC. Also, I may substitute omega naught square as 1 upon LC or you can say omega naught is equal to 1 upon under root LC. So this is, this reminds you of the resonance con condition. This equation, the second order differential equation tells you that at some frequency omega naught, uh, this particular circuit LC in mode 2 will resonate. It will be undergoing resonance and uh, that omega naught frequency will be equal to 1 upon, its square will be equal to 1 upon um, LC. So I can uh, further write 1 upon LS, I mean ILS is equal to VDC 
by L S square upon omega naught square plus S I naught upon S square plus omega naught square plus I naught S L C which is equal to uh, into 1 upon s square plus omega naught square. So from this equation, I can find the solution by using inverse Laplace transforms. So in the time domain, I have I L is equal to, I can write this as omega naught into omega naught and this becomes VDC by omega naught L into sine of omega naught T. You should be well versed with Laplace transforms to be solving this. Uh, plus I naught into S upon S square plus omega naught square. It is cos of omega naught T. And then uh, this I can write as omega naught square omega naught square now the Laplace inverse of omega naught square upon s there is an s over here into s square plus omega naught square is 1 minus cos omega naught t so I can further write this as plus i naught by omega naught square lc uh, into 1 minus cos omega naught t or in other words you can simply uh, you know write it in terms of uh, this particular thing in terms of sine and then you can uh, integrate it because it's 1 by s and you will eventually get the same thing so let's move on and finalize the solution a little more So I have I L T is equal to uh, omega naught square L C is simply 1, right? So I have I L T is equal to V D C omega naught L and omega naught L I can also write it as Z naught where Z naught is the characteristic impedance which is equal to under root of L C. So obviously it will be equal to omega naught L where omega naught is equal to 1 upon under root L C. Right. So uh, I can write omega naught L as Z naught. So VDC by Z naught sine omega naught T plus I naught cos omega T minus I naught cos omega T becomes zero. So this is I naught. So I get an equation for I L as a function of time. From this I can also find VC as a function of time. Now, Vc as a function of time will simply be equal to Il minus I0 uh, by C. So, Vc will be equal to integral because this is differential I integrated. Integral of Vdc by Z0 sine of omega0 t dt. If I solve further... I will get Vc is equal to Vdc by Z naught cos of omega naught t and there is also C over here by omega naught uh, and there is a minus sign plus k. Now Uh, this k is the integration constant and I want to solve for the integration constant and in solving for the integration constant I will require the initial value of the capacitor voltage so the initial value of capacitor voltage I know it is 0 so 0 is equal to Vdc minus Vdc this omega naught z naught c is simply 1 so cos of 0 is 1 cos of 0 is 1 plus k 
so k is equal to vdc or in other words i can simply write it as vdc or i can simply write capacitor voltage is equal to vdc into 1 minus cos of omega naught t so i have solved for the capacitor voltage as well as the inductor current in mode 2 let's plot uh, the inductor current varies as a sin sinusoidal function sin omega naught t so if sin omega naught t is this then sin vdc sin omega uh, by z naught sin omega t plus i naught so you give it a dc shift it will look something like this so if this is sin omega naught t sin omega naught t plus i naught will look like this so this is your inductor current and this point where the inductor current becomes zero is t2 and this is where your mode ends now let's plot the capacitor voltage it is if this is sin omega t then minus cos omega t will look like this right and uh, 1 minus cos omega t so you again scaling it by 1 will look like this so the capacitor voltage is going to look something like this let it stay here so capacitor voltage is going to look like this so from the this interval uh, t1 to t2 obviously then it will fall after that uh, so from this interval t1 to t2 the capac inductor current is going to follow this curve and the capacitor voltage is going to follow this curve also you must know that the t over here is not basically t it is t minus the initial condition t1 so it's t minus t1 and over here also it is t minus t1 right because you've started the analysis from t1 and ended the analysis at t2 the point where the inductor current reaches its peak you may also identify that point as say t um, x and the point where the capacitor voltage reaches its peak you may also identify it as t y right now what happens let's try to analyze it in mode 2 uh, the equivalent circuit was something like this the switch was on there was an l there was a c and then there was a load the diode was off right so initially the inductor current is rising and the capacitor is also charging so energy is coming from the source going into the capacitor and load i naught is being maintained constant right at some point when the capacitor voltage reaches its peak at this point be below this point the inductor current is falling below i naught and the capacitor is discharging capacitor voltage is also falling which means that from t y to t2 basically what is happening is that your inductor does not have enough energy so your i naught is being sustained by the capacitor as well as the inductor together so this is what is happening from here because the capacitor is discharging and it is discharging because the inductor current has fallen below i naught it cannot sustain i naught alone right and at t2 the inductor current completely becomes zero which means that uh, your device turns off because the inductor is directly connected in series with your device so this begins the mark of uh, mode 3 it also means that although you gave the pulse at t naught on your own without even taking the pulse uh, due to lc resonant due to the combination of l and c automatically the device has been turned off at t2 therefore 
like i told you the pwm starting uh, switching strategy has to be designed intelligently smartly that automatically you would draw the pulse at this point or you can say l and c have to be designed in such a way uh, that a, t1 t2 and all these time intervals have to be designed in such a way that uh, when the pulse turns off automatically that time the inductor current or the switch current becomes zero so at t2 we know that the inductor current which is also the switch current it has turned uh, to be equal to zero we can also find out t2 the value of t2 let's find it out we have found out t1 the first mode where it ends let's find out the second mode t2 what is its time so at t2 we know that the inductor current becomes zero so zero is equal to vdc by z naught sine of omega naught it was t minus t1 and t is t2 at this point so t2 minus t1 plus i naught so i can say uh, it is minus sine inverse z naught i naught by vdc minus uh, is equal to omega naught t2 minus t1 right and also you must know that t2 lies in the third quadrant because the sine wave starts from here this is the first quadrant 0 to 90 this is 90 to 180 this is the second quadrant and t2 lies in the third quadrant so obviously i can simply write it as pi plus sine inverse z naught i naught by vdc if i take a positive angle and uh, this whole divided by one upon omega naught i have t2 minus t1 t1 i have found out in mode one and t2 uh, i can find if i know t1 and all of these values so this gives me the value of t2 or it tells me when the device will go off from these calculations actually you give the pulses to the uh, device so now mode two is over a lot of mathematics in here but uh, never mind i think that's the beauty when you relate mathematics with uh, real circuits so let's begin with mode three what happens at t2 now that the inductor current has become zero so the inductor current has become zero or you can say the switch current has become zero but the capacitor is very well in the circuit so it will continue to provide energy to the load and as long as the capacitor voltage exists there is some capacitor voltage right at t2 as long as the capacitor voltage exists the diode is reverse biased because you know that the diode is connected like this and therefore the diode will not go into conduction right now the period of resonance is over and it's time for the capacitor to keep on discharging it had begun discharging a little earlier but the inductor current existed so it was inductor current as well as the capacitor were trying to feed the load but now the capacitor is on its own let's write the differential equation you have c dv by dt the capacitor voltage is equal to minus i naught if this is ic so it is equal to minus i naught i can write vc is equal to uh, minus i naught t upon c plus k let me remind you this analysis begins at t so it's better to write this as t minus t2 plus k right let's find the integration constant k by using uh, the initial value of capacitor voltage which means the value of capacitor voltage from here this is mode 2 which begins at t2 all the way up to t3 right so uh, what was the value of vc at t2 that basically depends on the equation of capacitor voltage in mode 2 was vc is equal to i 
have not saved it so i have to use my notes yeah so this is uh, vdc into one minus cos of omega naught t where t in this interval was t minus t1 we are talking about mode two this was during mode two so this particular interval is mode one this particular interval is mode two and during the mode two this was a capacitor voltage right and uh, at the end of mode 2 or you can say at the beginning of mode 3 i want to find the capacitor voltage which is the initial condition of capacitor voltage it will be equal to vdc t2 minus t1 because t is equal to t2 so i can write this as vdc 1 minus cos omega naught t2 minus t1 is equal to minus i naught c t2 minus t2 is simply 0 plus k. So k is this value. So k is simply this. So my capacitor voltage during this time is minus I naught t minus t2 plus VDC 1 minus cos of omega naught t2 minus t1. This entire thing is a constant. There is no time variation here. This is the time varying uh, interval. I, I mean, if this is the part that is contribution to the contributing to the variation in I naught. And if I naught is positive, uh, this is I naught t. In fact, minus of I naught t. If I naught is flat, then I naught t will be uh, like this and minus i naught t will be reducing so naturally the capacitor voltage will reduce till you reach t3 so during this interval the capacitor voltage will continue to uh, decrease as the capacitor feeds into the load so from t2 to t3 the inductor current remains zero so inductor current is zero and the capacitor is discharging into the load and the capacitor voltage is falling. At T3, the capacitor voltage falls to zero completely and now the capacitor cannot sustain the load. So what happens is that the diode comes into picture. So the diode is forward biased by the load inductance or the filter inductance of the load and the diode now goes into conduction. Again, the capacitor is short circuited. So this is the mode 4 which is from T3 to T4 and this is the freewheeling interval where it's just like you know uh, the switch is off and the device is on so mm, during the freewheeling interval after that you will have uh, voltage across the capacitor being zero because the diode is on and obviously current through the switch is also zero say till T4 some point T4 beyond T3 and at T4 once you the diode has conducted for some interval depending upon uh, for how long you want the diode to conduct depending upon the duty ratio of the switch at T4 you can give a pulse again and the process will start again. Now my point is that how did we achieve zero current switching? So go back to this waveform this is inductor current and this is also my switch current, IS. The only thing I need to plot is the switch voltage. So I can see the switching dynamics of my device. Uh, the switch voltage, as long as there is switch current, it is going to be zero. So the switch voltage is going to be zero as long as the switch is conducting, which is still to, uh, T2. So during mode one, as well as mode two, we see zero. Then during mode 3, T2 to T3, let's see uh, what the switch voltage is. So mode 3, you had uh, the switch off, the inductor here, the capacitor discharging into the load and the diode being off. Right. So what is the voltage across the switch? It is simply VDC minus VC. So voltage across the switch was VDC minus VC. VDC is, uh, you know, constant and VC is falling. So obviously this entire thing is rising. Voltage across the switch is rising. It is VDC minus VC, right? And what is happens beyond T3? 
when the capacitor voltage has fallen to zero obviously the diode has gone into conduction like this so what is the voltage across uh, the device it is simply VDC so it is simply VDC now observe the turn off period the turning off of the device the pulse goes off here right and the current has become zero when the pulse goes off and once the current has become zero only then the voltage across the switch starts rising so if you see here there is no loss if you see here there is no loss because zero current rising voltage falling current zero voltage so this is zero current switching at turn off right and I like I told you depending on what L and C you have used you have to strategically give pulses to the device so this is turn off soft switching turn on of course there will not be soft switching you're seeing there will be some voltage across the device because you're repeating again no? then you will give a pulse the current will start rising there will be voltage turn on over here is not soft switched but the turn off portion is zero current switching zero current and then voltage rises right I mean zero current here and then the voltage rises so current becomes zero over here and then the voltage rises so the loss in this circuit is zero this was about a zero current switching uh, circuit resonant buck converter circuit I hope it was clear it, it involved a lot of mathematics and I did not have enough space over here to do that mathematics so I had to keep struggling with the equations but uh, if you have any doubts or queries needless to say you can contact me uh, on the whatsapp group and uh, we'll continue with resonant converters for a while and then we'll move on to um, the data sheet analysis that I had talked about maybe that we can do on a google meet uh, session that's all for today thank you very much